What's up, my boomers? It's me, Melanie Mac, here on my social commentary channel, Melanie Mac Go Boom. I'm recording this a second time. <laughs> As I told a lot of you guys, I got a new PC. Uh, Meta PC sponsors me now. And so they sent me this, and I uh, have set up everything again. Well, unfortunately, on my last video, uh, <laughs> I recorded for over 20 minutes and it pulled the audio from the camera and this. So it, I was like, I'm not even going to try to salvage this. I'm just going to refilm the whole thing. <laughs> so, hi. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm not going to be as productive today as I was hoping, but I'll do what I can. So, anyway, today's video is a true case. Of heck around and find out all right I don't get it like this dude just thought it would be a genius idea to try to rob a concealed carry class you know just that's <laughs> 200 IQ move there big brain big brain I just you know just probably the absolute worst place you could possibly want to rob from and do goodness knows what else. I don't, I'm just going to have to show you guys because this is insane. Um, yeah, I'm just going to show you guys and we're going to talk through it a little bit. The students were taking a break in the classroom when Mr. Payton entered the room and began rifling through a bag which contained a handgun that belonged to one of the students. Okay, so what it looks like, because I got confused at first, I was like, wait. Because it looks like that's his bag and he's like, what the crap? No. But this is the guy. This is the guy who was in the class. It looks like he went on a bathroom break or whatever. And this guy waltzed in. So he wasn't even in the concealed carry class to begin with, uh, to my knowledge. This is just, I'm paraphrasing how I'm hearing it. And he just sat down there and started shuffling through his bag. I don't know why this guy didn't do anything. Um, maybe he didn't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm just, I'm just hoping this guy ain't a Steelers fan. I see the black and yellow. I don't want, I don't want a criminal representing us. No, but unfortunately there's fans of uh, every team who are good and bad people. Okay. So yeah, that happened. Let's continue. The owner of the bag was able to prevent the gun from being stolen. And Mr. Payton was escorted out of the classroom at that time. And it so he's like, bro, what's up? You're taking my gun? Like, dude, that's my bag. What are you doing? You sure trying to steal from me? Hey, dudes. And so the guys who work there are like, hey, okay, we got to escort you and have a talk. This ain't cool. It's a very dangerous thing, especially in a room that involves guns. An employee spoke to Mr. Payton for several minutes trying to figure out what he was doing in the gun range. A short time later, another employee called police to report the attempted grand larceny. Three employees escorted Mr. Payton outside of the business and waited for officers to arrive. Officer Wynn and his partner instructed Mr. Payton to stand in front of their patrol vehicle. Mr. Payton ignored those instructions and started to walk away while hiding his right hand in his jacket pocket. Officers attempted to grab Mr. Payton, but he pulled away and still refused to listen to the officers. Officers attempted to grab Mr. Payton by his arms once again to gain control of him. This time, Mr. Payton pulled away and produced a screwdriver from his pocket. Okay, deadly weapon. And violently attacked the officers. Mr. Payton made So there he pulled it out right there. There it is. You can the see it. You can see it in his hand right there. He pulls the screwdriver out. You can see it. Like, there it is. Right there. He's literally trying to murder the cop. Several overhand strikes with the screwdriver towards one of the officer's head and neck area. Mr. Payton was able to stab one officer during his violent attack. That easily could have ended in a in a murder there, which I to my knowledge didn't, luckily. But that's exactly what he was trying to do. You can see him trying to stab the neck and the head regions. As the injured officer fell to the ground, Officer Wynn and three employees of the business discharged their firearms, striking Mr. Payton. Officers immediately summoned medical personnel, but Mr. Payton succumbed to his injuries at the scene. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is a very clear scenario, okay? This dude just attempted murder right here, and for all any of 
these guys know uh, could have succeeded. They don't know. They don't see the injuries. They don't know if said person is going to succumb to their injuries. So what this means is, an at best, an attempted murderer, at worst, an actual murderer who is there and leaving the scene who could goodness knows attack another victim on the way the ground, you know Wynn, in my Green opinion they did Robert what they had Robert to do has, man they're protecting this is a, an act of protecting okay um this is a clear murderer or attempted murderer uh on the loose and they did they did what they needed to do to protect uh any future victims or especially near future victims that could have happened i don't know what the crap the what his motives were in the first place this could have been so freaking catastrophic had he succeeded in getting the weapon out like if this could have been a uh, just I, i'm very curious to see if they get a hold of his phone or something like that to try to see if there's any sort of motive that they can figure out that was originally intended because what the freaking crap, dude. So, so now the comments here, uh, oh, they, they, they're showing some different ones now. Oh, I think the one I wanted to read, they went private or something. Oh, wait, no, here it is. So he goes, so what's the law? You can shoot someone even if they're fleeing. I don't know how this is up for debate. I'm just how is this even up for debate is beyond me, but 391 people thought so, apparently. Um, even if they're fleeing once they have injured someone with a weapon. <laughs> yeah, okay, so if somebody... Is, again, well, like I said when I watched the video, how do you know he didn't even succeed? How do you know they weren't going to succumb to their injuries? So if you see someone trying to murder other people, you're just supposed to sit back and let them go? Like, they had the, the weapon and they used the weapon, Okay. This is a, a murderer or attempted murderer on the loose. What else are they going to do? Let the dude just run off and hurt somebody else along the path? And people are like, oh, I was wondering that too. I'm a Brit, of course. Uh, of course you're a Brit. Uh, <laughs> no offense to my Brits, but I'm just saying. <laughs> oh my gosh. So... I love hearing people flip this into making the suspect the victim. People have lost their minds. That is exactly what I agree with. This should be a no-brainer. I don't know how this is even up for debate. Anything can be a deadly weapon. In this case, it was a screwdriver. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. You're right, Rose. That was definitely... I mean, a screwdriver? That's a deadly weapon. Um... The law is play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Thank goodness there's some people with some common sense in the comments here because I don't know how, I don't know how you can defend that attempted murderer at best. I don't know. Uh, this guy says, this is why I advocate for police to be better trained in self-defense. I respect police 100%, but if these officers were highly trained in martial arts, two of them would have easily taken him down and ended it there. Maybe he has a broken arm. This is what people are so quick to make comments like this, not being in a situation like that themselves and being in a fight or flight split second moment. Um, I think obviously, ideally it would be nice if cops were more trained and they, um, you know, weren't getting fat on donuts, not that all of them do, but, like, when you, when you have a job like this and you have to protect people, then, yeah, they should have some sort of regular PT test similar to, like, the military to where they are in tip-top condition at all times because they do need to be able to handle themselves, um, and obviously some sort of martial arts would be helpful, but who's to say that would have changed this? This is someone with a weapon versus someone without one, okay? Um, a lot easier said than done. But I think given the situation, what was at hand here, they did what they needed to do. And it looked like it was, or I think the officer and the people at the, at the school. But like, yeah, some people just aren't easy to detain no matter what, especially the kind who get into fights with the police. Exactly. And the thing that you have to really, there's so many factors when it comes to martial arts and stuff. There is no amount of martial arts training that is going to, this is why when it comes to martial arts, wrestling, UFC, any of that stuff, they still have weight classes. Um, because if somebody is just bigger and stronger than you, they're going to be bigger and stronger than you. No matter how much you train. Like, dude, I've been lifting weights for 
a year and a half now, okay? I've built over 10 pounds of muscle. But my friend who, you know, she arm wrestled me after, I don't know, at this point, it was like, okay, I've been training and weightlifting for like a year. And she's like, I'm scared to arm wrestle you now. But at the time, which she has lost some weight now, but she was significantly, uh, not, not that she was fat. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're watching this girl. But no, like, the girl had like, what? at least 50 pounds on me. So it's like, no, I'm not going to be able to beat somebody who has 50 pounds on me in arm wrestling when, uh, you know what I mean? It's just how it is. So obviously, you know, there are some exceptions. You got some people who are just so uh, just elite at martial arts and things like that, but that's not going to be the case in this situation. I, I, people always throw that stupid argument. Oh, the martial arts, if they were good at martial arts. It's not like the movies, man. They don't get it. You can tell people who have never been in a fight in their lives, which hopefully they don't have to be in a fight in their life, but I'm just saying. But yeah, to me, this is a clear case of heck around and find out. I agree with people who said that. Um, this was clearly someone with bad intentions. I'm curious to see um, if they can actually pull up conclusive evidence of what the motive was here. But clearly, here was somebody who was doing some damage and who, uh, quite frankly, almost, or at least intended to, um, end someone's life. So, yeah, I don't think anybody involved in this situation needs to be punished. I think that this was a beyond stupid move on the perpetrator here. I don't understand the logic of this is the place you want to rob. This is the place you want to cause trouble. <laughs> yeah. But if you see, if you notice, and this is people who are so anti-gun and they think that people who have guns are just all dangerous people. You notice they didn't even discharge their weapons until the guy had attempted to uh, end someone's life, okay? So usually when you when you see people like this, um, you know, in concealed carry classes and stuff like that, like gun owners who are very... Um, yeah, they're they're mostly very responsible. There's always gonna be some anomalies, but I'm also this also makes me curious to see like um, some statistics now because once uh, some states went open carry like Texas, uh, people are like, oh no, there's just gonna be all these these gun murders. Where are they at? I want to see the statistics because like you think if that if if all of a sudden they just skyrocketed because open carry now. They'd be showing, but I, I haven't seen anything, so I'll, I'll look into it. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and go into the comments. I got to go back now because I am refilming this. Okay, Gaming with Stan says, I don't... I don't know. I think Tomb Raider needs a break. I like the new games. They have good gameplay, but there is a lot of competition. Maybe just make a really good Tomb Raider game every 10 years or so. I don't even care about Uncharted. Uh, the way I see it right now, too, is I do partially agree with this. I think with the direction that Tomb Raider's been, with the focus on overdramatic storytelling, and that's it. Um, and they've even made it clear that that's going to be their focus in the future um, with the next title as well. Then, yeah, I think just give it a break, dude. Just give it a break. Because as it stands right now, these the, the, the reboot trilogy, it's like, a, okay, here's a fun experience. Uh, Action-y, Uncharted type game that doesn't actually feel like Tomb Raider. But you get to you get to watch a fancy story with fancy cutscenes. And then once you're done, you're done, really. Because there's not... It's, it's not really an adventure. It's just a dramatic story. I'm ready to see more substance and gameplay. Like, get back to the roots, man. If you can't, then just give it a break. Jermair says... The ideal studio to make a new Tomb Raider would be Toys for Bob, IMO. And I 1,000% agree. And for those who don't know, to my knowledge, Toys for Bob made, like, the Spyro remasters um, or remakes um, and Crash Bandicoot and all that. I just think they're so good at keeping the charm of the original titles that they're focused on and adding the, the graphical improvements and also tweaking some controls in a minor way that doesn't completely transform the game. So I 1,000% agree with this. Mass Exodus says, we don't need next-gen storytelling, whatever that means. We need next-gen gameplay, at least as far as Tomb Raider is concerned. Some franchises should be kept simple, kind of like Hitman. I 1,000% agree, and we see, like, Hitman get better. Um, you know, it kind of strayed for a bit, and then it got better once they, like, transferred studios and all that. So, yeah. I, I think when it comes to Tomb Raider, they're trying to force it into this giant Hollywood thing. 
They're this Hollywood dr- overdramatic storytelling, all this kind of stuff, action-packed, Uncharted-style gameplay. When Tomb Raider wasn't meant to be overly complex like the the actual formula is pretty simple it's an adventure okay you got platforming um which was a massive part of the gameplay mechanics and difficulty which whenever you take away the platforming mechanics such as they have and put in auto grab and shiny ledges well then suddenly you miss a core part of the gameplay okay now it suddenly isn't the same game anymore um, just changing that, let alone the combat, let alone the puzzles. Um, I mean, the, the general simple mechanics are there. They can always tweak some things. If they want to tweak some things about the controls, they want to tweak some things about how, you know, it's previously grid based game. You work with what you can on that and tweak with what you can, but the fundamentals of difficult and traversal that makes you actually have to think, um, platforming should be a fundamental element of the gameplay. Um, as should puzzle solving and um, artifact and key collecting to advance, okay? Um, things of that nature. So we don't need a bunch of fancy cutscenes. We don't need a fancy movie and a dramatic story. That's not what Tomb Raider was ever founded to be. Like, get back to the freaking roots, dude. Ocean Gaming says, Melanie, if you ever wanted Tomb Raider remasters, this is excellent news. Embracer is known for remastering games. I freaking hope so. So fingers crossed on that. Mrs. Salvage says, I'll raise my glass when I hear Crystal Dynamics will leave the building. Funny, people think it's Square Enix because the problem why Tomb Raider isn't Tomb Raider is thanks to Crystal Dynamics. I thousand percent agree. They hate the classic Lara, so I still have my doubts. This will be a positive change. Yeah, now I do think the positive thing from Square Enix is they already have their ethics department and all that bull crap that they're trying to do. Um, so I'm glad that that's a waste. But I will say... Um, Crystal Dynamics is the biggest problem why Tomb Raider has not been faithful to itself. And it's to do with the higher-ups. The higher-ups do not like classic Lara Croft. Um, they've been adamantly clear on that. Um, and I think that they just, yeah. They, they've been so focused on making Tomb Raider their own new thing. And they're so bitter toward classic Lara and classic Tomb Raider. Because people still love that and want to see it again. When they wanted to take an existing franchise and make their own thing. When they should have just created their own IP. Uh, instead of completely transformed an existing one. Plague Injected says introverted doesn't always mean shy or withdrawn. Thank you for this comment. Because people will try to tell me, tell me that I'm not an introvert. And it's so funny. <laughs> I, I live I live my life and people tell me I'm not an introvert and I'm actually very extremely on the introvert uh, spectrum. Uh, people think I'm not simply because they see me film on camera. Um, they see me in my room alone talking to a camera and being comfortable and being bubbly and being energetic. And what they fail to realize is if you don't understand that an introvert can be this way, then you most likely haven't um, gotten comfortable or haven't had introverts comfortable with you. Now, some introverts are the very analytical type and they're a lot more quiet in general. They might not be bubbly and goofy, but I'm telling you the goofiest people I know are introverts. Like <laughs> my older brother, for example, extremely introverted, very quiet. Like when it comes to public and being around people he's the quiet one he's a but when he's just around family or some of our close friends that are like family the goofiest person in the room okay and I'm similar in that way um except I probably am a little more uh it, it really depends on the situation. But if you catch me trying to make friends, or especially uh, <laughs> the rare times I can get myself around actually going on a date, <laughs> just not very often. Um I am, I, it, it, it's very hard for me to feel like I can be myself and be bubbly and be goofy. It takes me so long to warm up to people, to where I'm comfortable with that. Unless it's something like I'm going to a gaming event and I'm in my element and I'm working it and I'm in my comfort zone. But usually, yeah, what you guys see on my streams and on video and all that, y'all are seeing me in my comfort zone. But even beyond that, some introverts are still very bubbly and goofy and can warm up to people easily, but it takes energy out of them. Um, there's so many misconceptions about introverts that people do not know. But if you think of the most goofy person imaginable, 
Uh, they're probably an introvert, I would say. <laughs> and if you haven't seen introverts be goofy, then you just, then introverts aren't comfortable around you. Luke the Kook says, in response to 1006, Jesus said, love the sinner, hate the sin. You never said anything promoting the sin. He who is without sin casts the first stone. You're doing great, Melanie. I can't wait for the next video. Thank you so much, Luke. I appreciate it. Yeah, and that's just the thing is I don't ever want to get in a position to where I am forcing my beliefs or I'm forcing the Bible and my faith and all that kind of stuff on anybody. That uh, That is not my job to do, and I ain't about to do that. I will talk about Bible verses, plant the seeds, all that kind of stuff, share that on my channel. But no, I'm not in the business of forcing uh, everybody to have to agree with that. Now, uh, when it, this topic, some people get really got mad that, you know, I said that I'm okay with certain video games having characters that are gay uh, in it, as long as it's like organic and all that, and they actually do the character justice. It's like, what do you expect? Am I supposed to want every single video game character to be a Christian? <laughs> not only that, but some gay people identify as Christian. And it's not my place to tell them they're not. Like, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, there's things that I do that aren't perfect. And do, and I'm, am I always in accordance with the Bible? No. It's like I try and, I, and they try. But it's just like, at the end of the day, that's not my job. That's between them and God. Um, that is not my job to tell them anything uh they're not hurting anybody as long as they're not like you know as long as everybody is anybody who anybody chooses to date who anybody is attracted to that they don't choose as long as as they are an adult it's none of my business and i ain't about to make it my business so as long as they and the person they're attracted to are adults <laughs> otherwise get the wood chipper all right uh <laughs> Bomb Shop says, the issue will be if it is woke. Look at what Crystal Dynamics is doing to Perfect Dark. Exactly. I made a video on this too. Um, but they really are trying to make Tomb Raider woke. Like, I don't care what anybody says. People want to act like the recent trilogy isn't woke. It is. It freaking is. Especially if you dive into the interviews and stuff. They hired woke people to write it and it's very woke. Brandon the Zealot says, it can't get much worse. Being said, precedes things getting worse. <laughs> We'll see, but my take on this is I would rather... I don't like the lukewarm crap where it's like, oh, we're going to try to unify things now, but not really. It's like, if you're going to ruin Tomb Raider, just go all out. Go all out and ruin it. <laughs> Either go all out and just completely ruin it or go back to its roots. I don't like this lukewarm crap. Yeah. MKL257 says, what's your favorite Christian music? I like a lot of stuff that I listen to, like, as a teenager. Um... You know, like, old school Skillet. I like their first, like, couple albums or so. Um, not as much their new stuff lately, but I love, love, uh, like, Collide and Comatose. All oh, those albums are so freaking good. Um, I like Thousand Foot Crutch, P.O.D., uh, Under Oath, Disciple, um, to Toby Mac. Toby Mac, that's right. Okay. <laughs> I almost said Toby Guard, because... Toby Guard made Lara Croft. Toby Mac. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of, like, of the hip bands from the day. Um, Michael Eddy says, I hope whoever does the next Tomb Raider puts dinosaurs in more puzzles. Very much needed. Absolutely. Thousand percent. Now, let me go into the verse of the day. I pick Galatians 6, 7 through 8, which says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Now, I like this because, I mean, there's a, there's multiple verses that talk about reaping what you sow and stuff. And so I think, at least for myself, typically I think of, I apply that to how we treat other people, for example. And you look at how the Bible will talk about um, those who set traps for others will fall into their own trap and et cetera, et cetera. So we all know that. But I think what really stood out to me with this one is how we can apply it to ourselves in our own lives as well. Because um, in this situation, it appears that it's more so referring to um, our own daily walk, our own daily life. Okay, so are we going to live life to please our own flesh or to please the spirit, you know? Um and there's a difference between, and I know I, I constantly talk about, hey, you know, none of us are righteous. We all sin. You know, we're all sinners. 
Uh, and that's why Jesus died on the cross. So but there's a difference between, you know, trying your best to stay on the path and stumbling along the way and picking yourself back up versus actively living for our own fleshly desires. Okay. Um, but I thousand percent agree with this. You know, let's, let's just think of ways. What are some ways that you can live that uh, are living for your own flesh? Okay. One of those being gluttony. Okay. This one's very tough because I mean, food is delicious. So look at something like gluttony. Okay. We're living for our own fleshly desires. We keep feeding that. So if you just eat a bunch of cakes and cookies and all that kind of stuff every single day and pizza and all that, um, then you will like you're the, you're sowing seeds for your own fleshly desires and, and that's going to reap as health problems. You know what I mean? Or think about things that are, that are, that are a lot worse. Okay. Think about things that are corrupt in nature, things that we like expose ourselves to a lot. Um, if we're partaking in activities that uh, are corrupt activities actively, then yeah, then then we will we'll see that come to fruition in our own lives. And so I think it's important. And that's the thing is living a, a life as a Christian is, you know, an active Christian. And, and I say active and not just... Uh, you know, an on fire Christian, I should say, not a lukewarm Christian, because like the Bible talks about being a lukewarm Christian. And um, I mean, it's so easy just to say, all right, I accepted the gift that Jesus died on the cross for me. Well, I'm going to do whatever I want, live for myself and not try to, you know, there's a difference there. Um, you're not going to, I, I think it's so important for us to try to be active in our faith, living our lives in a way that pleases God and not just for ourselves and our flesh and it's easier said than done and we're all going to stumble and stuff we all have our own weaknesses but at the end of the day yeah this really this stood out to me and i wanted to share it but anyway there you have it for today's video thank you all so much for hanging out with me today i'll catch you all tomorrow and in the meantime go boom